And that middle name, can anyone know how to try it? One on one one. Close. One on one one. And my God, my fish. <laughs> to come to this incredible um, to this incredible celebration. I've heard people bring God up in this in their speech, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I think everything was planned for a reason and it started with this journey. The reason I say that is because it allowed me to fly halfway across the world for 50 hours to not only accept this award, but to watch my incredible kids, and I'll tell you a little bit about them later on, who are doing amazing things. And I say that because, as you all know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, isn't it? So we are so humbled to all be here. And standing here tonight, it just, I mean, wow. That's quite incredible. To come all the way from Zambia, coming to the U.S. and full circle going back home. So I am just so, so grateful to be here and to be part of this incredible induction. Like I said, the journey started back in Zambia and I was lucky enough to come to Principia and at Prin, I didn't only go to the college, I went to the high school as well. I think you guys know, there's a high school in St. Louis and the college is in Elsa. And really, my journey of track and field started at Prin. But believe it or not, I was one lazy sort. <laughs> I was lazy. And the reason why is because I was naturally talented. You know that natural talent? You don't think you need to do anything? So I just kind of, you know, I just kind of winged it. I just kind of kept on going. But what happened is I realized that there was something there, but I didn't know how to tap into it. So this one day, my um, coach, my old high school coach at Prince, said, okay, Rosie, we're going to run to Elliston. And if anyone knows Principia, Elliston is this wicked, hilly run that I would try and avoid a thousand times. But this time, she said, nope, you're not going to get out of this. I'm going to drive my car while you run. <laughs> I was like, what? And that's what she did. She said, Rosie, I don't care if this takes all night but you are going to run back and forth that 3.1 kilometers. I'm not sorry, yeah, 3.1 K. No, 3.1 miles, sorry, 5 K, sorry. I've been messed up with Zambia, America, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. So that's what we did. But I will tell you this, that moment was really the moment that changed my life forever. Because I realized that I was capable of doing so much more than I was, than I thought I could. And I just needed an extra push, right? Don't we all just need an extra kick, right? And it took me Suarez to say, Gozi, you can do this. And to think that as of that experience, I actually went and won cross country. Because I was so motivated. Principia, high school, college, Olympics. In that order. I went to my first Olympic Games in 92 as a junior at Principia. I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for people like Lee, who had, who had supported it currently. If I hadn't done that Ellison one, I don't know what I've done. I went to the Olympics and I saw what hard work was all about. No one was lally gagging and crying and going to Ellison and all that nonsense. They were working hard. They were pushing. They were, they were actually working. And I said, wow, this is what it takes to become an elite athlete in the world. So you know what? I'm gonna give it four more years. And that's what I did. I worked hard and went to Atlanta. The Olympics were in Georgia, right? And again, there was another turning point in my life because I ended up staying in the US and getting my master's and getting my MBA and just having incredible opportunity. I think one of the speakers said opportunities like this come once in a lifetime. And if you don't grab those opportunities and you miss them, they may not come again. So I took advantage of that, coming from so far away. I had to, right? And I stand here because of all those experiences. And as I stand here, I learned about discipline, about focus, about friendships, about God, 
our humility, our gratitude, about being an all around good person. It doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter your religion, we're all human beings at the end of the day. And that's what I learned. I took that home, and now I own my own gym, back in Zambia. Who could have thought that? I'm giving employment to my people, I'm able to come back to the US and watch. <laughs> it's quite incredible. I've got two amazing kids, and one of them just won do this and to watch my kids, we see we run incredibly, which means she goes to regionals, which means I have to go to Arkansas, which means all these things. But before then, I've got a track at state track me coming up. Isa, who's one of the fastest kids I think in Missouri, in the 100, the 200, the 400. How does that happen? But I have to even with his dad. Yeah, his dad is a three time Olympian, but you know what? No one's here to talk about Tommy. So I sing like this. <laughs> He's so far away. <laughs> I say all this again, guys, with so much love and humility, to be grateful for this incredible opportunity, this incredible award, not only for myself, but my fellow inductees. Life has just a funny way of just bringing things full circle. It took me getting this invitation to come here to be able to come and watch my children run. I mean, that's just not a coincidence, right? And to come to this incredible place to meet all of you. So I am truly really humbled, I am grateful, I am thankful, and I hope that as sportsmen and women, we continue this trend of encouraging the next generation. Like you said, you've got two beautiful kids, one on the way, incredible athletes, all of us are doing the great things that we're supposed to. So, I say all this to congratulate everyone who's been nominated today, and thank you so much. I hope I have to get home to get over my jet lag a little bit more, but I'm very grateful to be here, and again, thank you so much.